Hi guys, this is Ratchet Throw, and we are playing Criminal Case Supernatural Investigations. And we are on our way to Iowa. It seems like we are going to investigate the missing children and not just have a quest. And not just go for a quest for the mind protection spell. Clarksville, Iowa, USA. I was hoping to avoid the Valentine's Day nonsense this year, Katarina. But I imagine Gwen will be all dewy eyed going out on a date. Oh, it's Valentine's Day in the game, huh? <laughs> Actually, Gwen's in bed. Those headaches and nightmares she's been suffering are getting worse. Oh dear. Let's hope a few days of rest will kick it. Anyway, we're not in Iowa for Valentine's Day. We came to Clark's Clarksville following an FBI lead. Agent Madison said another child had gone missing here. Yes, and chances are these are regular kidnappings. A kid we spoke to in Chicago said his brother was taken by some creature with weird eyes. The last report inside the O'Malley Evans was... Katarina, I just covered on my police area that a body has been found in a forest near here. And they're saying it's some sort of ritual killing. Oh. A ritual killing. That sounds like something we should look into. I'll get out of whore with Matt to pull a few strings. Keep the local authorities off our backs. Katarina, you look head over to that forest and get a look at the crime scene. Okay. Alright, who died in a ritual way? I was expecting a pentagram to be... For the body to be at the center of the pentagram, but no, she's in the river. And why do you have a NASA logo on your shirt? Do you work for them? Not NASA, Sarah! Ugh. It's supposed to be Sarah in uh, in criminal case. The young woman is dead, all right, Katarina. She must have fallen from that bridge and hit her head. So how do we know this wasn't an accident? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. You're right, I was called an infinity symbol into her arm. And those bars on her shoulders suggest she was pushed. Oh, now I notice the symbol. I don't know what that symbol means, but it could be something supernatural. Let's see what Ben can find out from the body. And how lucky you found next to the victim must belong to her. We still don't know where her, na her name, but that's definitely her photo. The guy in the other picture could be her boyfriend. Let's cross check his image with our records. And the handkerchief must have been dropped by the killer. There's blood all over it. I don't see any fingerprints, but we should take a sample of that blood. There could be other forensic evidence on that handkerchief. We have to put our investigation into the mysterious abductions on the back burner, Katarina. Let's get to work. Alright. Well, we already assumed she was pushed to death, so no murder weapon. Let's first identify the person on the locket. Wearing one earring on the left ear, does that mean he's gay? Or is it the right ear? I don't know anymore. The guy in the victim's lucky photo is named Andrew Lodge, Katarina. Looks like he falls on us to break the bad news of his girlfriend's murder on Valentine's Day of all days. 
but we don't even know who she is yet, so we have to pretend we are undercover cops to investigate the crime. Let's go speak with Angel Lodge, Detective Katarina. Yeah, finally you say it. Well, we are detectives after all. Okay, now the stained handkerchief. Nice work, Katrina. There may not be any fingerprints on the killer's handkerchief, but this sample might give us a new lead. Let's get this sample to Priya. Okay. Alright, now let's go talk to this guy. Angel Lodge, we are detectives and we'd like to ask you a few questions. We're trying to identify this woman. She was murdered earlier today and... What? Sharon's dead? Oh my god. Are you her boyfriend? And her name was Sharon? Yes, Sharon Decker. We've been dating for about a year. Sharon had an infinity symbol scratched to her arm. Does that mean anything to you? I have no idea. What kind of widow would do something like that? Oh, my darling Sharon's gone. I've lost a lot of my life on Valentine's Day. She was so excited about this. She was stopped by the Valentine's Day store in town this morning. We're sorry for your loss, Mr. Lodge. Meanwhile, Detective Katarina, if Sharon was in this Valentine's store, we should check it out. Uh, poor guy. Let's go to the shop. What a lovely store. Good grief, Katrina. Just look at this stuff. It's like Cuphead himself threw up all over this shop. Anyway, let's get on with it. The fact you picked up belongs to Sharon Decker. Those are her initials. Let's take a look through her things. If you're lucky, we'll find a clue about her murder. And the guy on that car broke out of must be the shop owner, Katarina. Let's ask the video section and see who he is. Maybe we'll remember seeing the victim. Okay. Love potion? Yes. <laughs> What's that you found in the victim's bag, Katarina? Some sort of Valentine's Day perfume? It's a love potion. Wait, this bottle didn't come from this shop. The label reads Morgana Blackhawk's Cordial of Desire. And we know who she is. Morgana Blackhawk? She's a witch coven leader we met in San Francisco. What's she doing in Iowa? And more importantly, what was the victim doing with a bottle of her love potion? Morgana knows we are supernatural hunters, so we won't need a cover story. But we do need to find out how she's connected to the victim. We need to again.
Okay, now the guy on the... Oh, let's cut out poster. Now we are getting some work, Katarina. According to this cardboard cutout, the owner of this Valentine's Day shop is named Ace Boom. How should we play this? Let's pretend we are customers who we heard talk around town about the murder of Sharon Decker. Why can't we just say that we are detectives? Come on, Katarina. Let's find Ace Boom. Okay. No need for cover story here, you already know us. Ah, Katrina. Gotta say you must be smiling on us to arrange such a fortress meeting. I'm not sure about our fortress, Morgana. We're investigating the murder of a young woman. Someone who stays to be acquainted with you. A young woman? Is it a witch you speak of? If not, I have no interest in a girl. Her name is Sharon Decker, and she had a bottle of your cordial of desire. Oh, her? During a brief encounter with the young lady, she expressed her interest in a love potion. She wanted it for her companion for Valentine's Day. Despite the vanity of the occasion, I obliged and sold her a bottle of my finest elixir. So that's it? You can't tell us anything more about her? Of course not. I don't know the girl, and I know nothing about her murder. Okay. Alright, now let's question this dude. Excuse us, Mr. Boom. We wanted to... Roses are red, violets are blue. The guys were getting a best balloon deal in town? That's you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. We're actually just browsing, but have you heard the news? Sharon Decker was murdered. Murdered? That's terrible. Sharon was in my shop this morning. Do you know Miss Decker apart from her being a customer? Not really. It's hard to keep track of the townsfolk. I'm so busy with my shop. I'm a self-made man, you see. I sat around running a humble balloon stand in the mall. But after years of blood, sweat and love, get it? Love. Here I am with my own store. Yes, well, about Miss Decker. There ain't not suspicious about her being in my store. Half the town has walked through my door this week. It's Valentine's Day, you know. Now, take this balloon on the house. Alright, I'll take it. Um, okay. Thanks. Well, we have a balloon after all. And this guy said he worked in a mall before he was selling balloons. Wait, isn't he the guy we met in Criminal Case Conspiracy in the mall? The guy who was selling balloons? I forgot his name, but it seems that we met him again now. So, how did you die? It's been a long time since I've had anyone to call my Valentine, Katarina. But I have fond memories of the ones I did. Not you too, Ben. Nothing but a bunch of hype, if you ask me. Now, about that body. Alright, you wet blanket. Right off the bat, there's a doubt this one was pushed to her death. There are distant trauma marks on her shoulders and chest where a killer would have showed her over the railing. I could also tell you that the, that, that the infinity symbol was carried to her arm before she died. Before. Poor girl. Do you have any idea what that symbol signifies? No, your Felix hasn't come up with anything. But there is something you'll be interested in. I found traces of albino hydroxide on the victim's shoulders, a major ingredient in antacid treatments. 
Now, the girl left behind the sand to see the residue. It's always they are suffering from heartburn. Oh. Well, Katrina, an upset stomach is the least of the curious worries. Okay. Now the blood. It stays like this where I miss my ex-husband the most, Katarina. He would always make a huge deal about Valentine's Day, treating me like a queen. If he couldn't handle being married to a werewolf, it's his loss. Well, you are our family now, Priya. Valentine's Day or not. That's sweet. Now, about the handkerchief. There's no doubt it's the curious. The saints left behind match the victim's blood type. The killer probably went down and touched the body, making sure she was actually dead. Well, it was a huge mistake. I found traces of praline chocolates mixed in with the blood, which the killer must have smudged off while wiping their hands. A mistake indeed, Katarina. We're one step close to catch this sweet tooth, tooth killer. Oh, cool. Of course, chocolates. Valentine's Day. As if all the hearts and balloons and chocolates aren't bad enough for Valentine's Day, Katarina. Now we got a murder on our hands. We came to Iowa following a lead on another abducted child. But instead of a missing kid, we find Sharon Decker pushed over a bridge with the, some strange symbols crashed into her arm. Sharon Decker's boyfriend, Andrew Lodge, was obviously devastated by the news. While Ace Boom, the guy who runs that Valentine's Day shop, says he barely knew the victim. I was surprised to find Morgana Blackhawk, the witch coincidence leader here in Iowa. She says she sold a love potion to the victim, as if that really works. We'll need a lot more than this to catch Sharon Decker's killer, Katerina. Well, I have a new lead. I run a search algorithm to locate AD belonging to the victim. And I got a hit. Someone just sent Sharon Decker a text message, and I know where her phone is. Okay, do tell us. In the next chapter. Alright, we're gonna stop here, we're gonna continue playing in chapter 2. So, thank you for watching, don't forget to leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye!